Good day everybody and welcome to part 3 of our Advanced Road Laying Tutorial Series. In this episode we'll be specifically looking at how to lay your roads in your city that will reduce traffic. Now one thing I see a lot of people do wrong right from the start is they base their entire city off of a single avenue. They'll lay down one road from the mouth of the city and then they'll base their city off of that. All that does is force everybody going in and out of the city wherever they're going to use that avenue. And you think you might be reducing intersections by doing that, but the intersections you do have end up getting clogged up very fast. I highly suggest when you're building the backbone of your city, you use multiple avenues that go around the circumference and through the center to give your citizens multiple paths to get where they're going, and not everyone will have to use the same avenues to reach their destination. Now, also in this pattern, you'll have noticed that I have intersections, but they're all three-way intersections. I have no four-way intersections. This will reduce the number of cars that have to, um, to take turns and get through the intersections and uh, should lower the jams that you see at some of these larger intersections on avenues. Of course, the most important intersection in your city will be at the city entrance, um, and this will be a bottleneck no matter what, but to try to avoid bottlenecks in the rest of your city, try to have the roads leading away from your entrance going to completely different parts of the city. That way it spreads the traffic out through the city as much as possible. Um, half of the car is going one way and half the car is going the other way. It's very tempting to start your zoning along these initial avenues you've laid, especially commercial zones because the higher traffic tends to bring by more shoppers. But realize that for every building that gets created on these zones, you're essentially creating a new intersection along the avenue where cars enter and exit these buildings. I also note that these new intersections, there are no left turns allowed. So for anyone who wants to come and make enter these buildings, on this particular example, they have to come to the end of the avenue and turn around at the intersection. All that's doing is causing even more traffic at the few intersections you have. To avoid that situation, put your zoning on neighborhoods away from your main avenues. And then you can connect these neighborhoods to your main thoroughfares through other roads. This will keep your sims mobile, but also keep them off of the major roads if they don't need to be there, and it will stop uh, U-turns in the major intersections, limiting the traffic to smaller intersections where fewer cars will be entering and exiting. Also note that you can control the right-of-way on these intersections by the density of the road. For example, this road has no traffic light, and any cars going straight down the avenue will have right away over the uh, stop sign on the lower density road. If I upgrade this to medium density road, now a stoplight appears and both directions will take turns back and forth having access to the main thoroughfare. Note that when you're placing your roads off of your avenues using the guidelines, the way the guidelines are set up are that you can fit a heavy or medium density building back to back with a lower density building in this space. So in this situation, once the buildings go up to heavy density, the space back here will be wasted because I'm not going to be zoning anything off of the main avenues. If you want a little trick to find your spacing on these avenues, you can take a tree row from the nature menu, place it down, and this will give you the spacing you need for a medium or heavy density building. And using your roads, it might take a moment to find the right spot. There we go. And over here. And this will give you better spacing to fit in just a heavy density building directly up against your avenues. The other option is, of course, to just simply place some parks or even trees inside of the extra space, making your city look pretty, reducing pollution, etc. You may be aware of the quick key holding control to fill in a zone real fast, but um, in this situation where you don't want zones along the avenues, you don't want to use that. But what you can do is you can essentially create two end caps at the beginning and end of where you want your zone to start, and then hold control between that and fill that in quickly. It doesn't have anything to do with the roads, but it's still a useful technique nonetheless. When designing these inner neighborhoods inside of the avenues, you have to be careful that you don't accidentally create shortcuts for the sims to take. For example, a sim coming in through the entrance, going over to this neighborhood, can easily cut through this neighborhood instead of taking the main intersection to get to his destination. 
So when you're designing these neighborhoods, you have to be careful to create no direct routes. It's not always possible to stop every direction. For example, if the sim was over here and wanted to get over here, he could cut through this area. Um, and if you're having a lot of trouble creating no direct routes through neighborhoods, sometimes it's just time to create another major thoroughfare that you can draw the neighborhoods off of. You might conclude that the simplest way to have a neighborhood that no other vehicles will cut through is to simply only have one entrance and exit. But realize that when you're doing this, for any service vehicles such as police, fire, or unemployment agents looking for sims to hire, once they've entered and done their job, uh, they have to backtrack back out the same way they came, which lowers their efficiency instead of just leaving through another exit heading to another neighborhood. For unemployment agents, if they come in and find that all these sims are already employed and then they have to back out, it's simply wasting time instead of hiring sims, and if it can't find sims for the next workday, you might just end up with more unemployment. So use these neighborhoods sparingly. Lastly, one of the most advanced techniques you can use to manage traffic in your city using roads is with overpasses. Particularly difficult skill to learn, but if done correctly it can have beautiful results. Something we can cover in another video, but it's been rumored that Maxis will soon be updating some city to include overpasses and tunnels as a normal tool that everyone can use. These tips are just guidelines. They're not hard and fast. Remember, rules are meant to be broken. Maybe you do want that commercial strip along an avenue, or maybe you want to build some of your services on the avenues, give them the best access to the city. Whatever you do, just make sure you guys have fun while you're doing it. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this, and let me know in the comments below if there's anything else in particular you want me to cover. Also check out my new series, Was At, in which I look at various tycoon and construction games that you may not have seen before. Also check out some of the playthroughs I've done with friends in SimCity. For now, take care and I'll see you later.